This screencast is going to cover associations with Mongoose. Associations in MongoDB are a non-trivial subject because MongoDB is a non-relational NoSQL database. Therefore, having relationships is not really a thing, so the best we can do is associations, which um, there's several ways to implement them. In this video, we're going to cover references, the reference method, which is storing the object IDs on some schema to objects of another schema. And then we'll talk about how to populate those objects so that we're, they're not just IDs anymore, but actual documents embedded in other documents. By the way, the baseline for our app is the user's app from the last video. If you go to the curriculum section on Mongoose CRUD, then you'll be all caught up by the end of that video. And in this video, we're going to add a skills entity so that one user has many skills. And skills can be just plain strings that are things like JavaScript, Python, Node.js, etc. But to start, we can go to our user schema and define skills on users. And skills is going to be represented as an array of objects. And the type of the object is going to be mongoose.schema.types.objectid. And I realize that this is a long chain of uh, nested object constructor things, but don't worry too much about this. You only really have to do this kind of thing for object ID because it's a special entity in MongoDB. So that's the type. And we're going to give the reference, which is the second required um, parameter here, to uh, the skills model, which we haven't built yet. But essentially what this is saying is store skills as an array of object IDs that reference a specific collection. And let's build that collection now. We can essentially copy and paste everything from the users, aside from the skills, obviously, because each skill is just going to be really simple in our model. We're just going to have name. So I'm going to shortcut this by replacing the lowercase word user with skill, and then do the same thing for uppercase user and skill. And just like that, we should have a skill schema. This should serve just fine. And then in our indexes, we just need to remember to export it. So exports.skill is require dot slash skill. There's a lot more to do here. Um, we're not going to fully implement the RESTful routing, but we can get away with the bare minimum. We will have to add a new router though. So I think we'll do that next in terms of having a skills router. You can also copy, instead of user, we're gonna grab skill from models. And then the bare minimum routes that we can get away with are probably gonna be the get at slash skills and the post at slash skills. That way we can create new skills and then see them in the list. So again, I'm gonna do some replacing here. Um, let's just say user replaced with skill and uppercase user replaced with upper, uppercase skill. And this uh, essentially works the same way, so all of this should be just fine for right now. We also need to export our router. I can go to app.js next, 
and import the skills router. Also need to export it from the index. So the app.js is going to use the skills router and we'll just say slash skills, all of those endpoints are controlled by the skills router. Uh, the next thing we need to do is add a couple templates. Um, we'll be needing new templates to have basically a form to enter skills and a list view for skills. So in this case, the skills are rendering the index and we can just call this index skills, for example. Or I kind of like skills index better. It just sounds better. Oh, whoops, that's the user's one. Skills index. So in the views, I'm going to create skills index dot plug. And I can use the user's index as a reference if I open this to the side. And just say see all skills. Then a reference to skills new to create a new skill. And then skills are much simpler. I don't need to edit the profile or anything. We're not going to implement those routes. But I'm just going to play the skill name in a span for each skill in skills. I will probably say the word skills about 4,000 times this video. Just warning. <laughs> um, all right. So the skills index is working according to this. And I think we need to do a form template so that we can add a new skill. So I'll just call it this new skill.pug. For this one, we can use the new pug as a reference. And it's going to be exactly the same, except it posts to slash skills instead of slash users. Let's see if we need anything else for this. So we have a get and a post handler for slash skills. We're also going to need a route for adding a new skill to render that new template that we just made. So slash skills slash new is going to handle a get request. The get request will just return response.render new skill. And let's test this by running our server. It's actually already running, which is good. So let's open it up in the browser. Localhost 3000 slash skills. Cool. And I've already added some from before the video, but we can test adding a new one. Let's try it. Uh, mongoose. And it's working. So that means the get request to the index is working, which is visible. Let's see if I can get both of them open. Whoops. There we go. So when I do the get request, it's handled, it renders the skills index. When I create a new skill, like MongoDB, it's the slash skill slash new. And then when I click submit, it sends a post request to the slash skills endpoint, which gets picked up and calls new skill dot save, then redirects back to the slash skills with the new item added. So everything there should be working fine. The next thing we should do is connect the two entities. So we have skills and users working. We need a way for skills to show up on the users. What we can do now is, in the users routes, add some new routes to handle the skills, basically. The way that we can do that is by router.route slash user ID 
slash skills slash new. And at this endpoint, uh, we can have a get request because this endpoint is going to be the one to render the form to add a new skill. I think we need a closing thing. And for right now, we don't know what parameters it's going to require, but we'll just say that it renders a new user skill template, which we can define right now. So new user skill dot pug. In this case, um, we'll probably just do this one from scratch because it's going to be a little bit different than the other ones. So it'll extend the base, have a block content, and then we can do an h1 that says add skills for, I guess we should put whichever user it is. So I'll say user.name. And then we're going to need to loop through the skills. My idea here is that instead of providing a text input for the user to enter, then <clears throat> having them get lucky and enter the correct skill name, it makes a lot more sense to just loop through the skills that already exist and then render buttons alongside of them that the user can click on to add that skill to their profile. That way we won't get the situation where a user tries to add a skill, but there's no corresponding reference in the database. So for this, we'll do each skill in skills. And we'll do a span that displays the skill name. And then for each skill, we're also going to have a form. When you submit the form, it redirects you to slash users, user ID, slash skills. And it does a post request. I shouldn't say redirect. Uh, the form, this is just the submit action, basically. the redirect will be controlled by our route handler. So the input type, we're going to need a submit button, which we can just call add skill. We're also going to need um, to get creative here in order to provide the actual ID of the skill. So what I'm proposing is that we do a hidden input. It can be a text input. And we'll call it skill underscore ID. And the reason I'm calling it underscore ID instead of camel case skill ID is because in Mongoose and MongoDB, the underscore ID is the document ID. So I'm explicitly trying to reference that ID in the name here. Uh, just being more helpful with the naming, I suppose. And then for the value, we will interpolate the skill at underscore ID. And I'll pass it hidden equals true. Cool. So if that all makes sense, we need a place for the new skills to show up. And I think the most logical place is to show them on the user profile, which is called the show template for us. So before we just had the person's profile, and now I'm going to do an H2 with skills. And then loop through all the skills that they have, each skill in skills. And create a list item with a span of the skill name. So that way you should be able to loop through the user and display all the skills that they uh, show. And I think that's almost everything. We're also going to need a handler for the post request. So we have the thing to render the new skill. But actually, we decided that the new skill form uh, is going to require a user, name, a user object or a user.name and a skill object because it's going to have skill.name and skill.underscore ID. So to get those, we're going to have to query the database. 
So what we can do is return our first query, which is user.findbyID. Um, we're going to get the ID from the route params. And then dot then with the user, issue our second query, return skill.find. Just going to get all the skills because the user will get to choose from any of them. And then finally, we can do our render here and just pass to this template an object that has both the user and the skills. So that should make sense. I think that'll work. And lastly, let's just do um, a route to receive the post request. So what we can do is router.route slash ID slash skills. This will handle the post request that this form submits. Dot post. And then we can do a handler here. And in this case, what we'll do is return user.findbyid and update. So even though it's a post request, we're not going to be inserting documents here. We're going to be adding references to other documents to a specific user document. Let's type that out. It'll probably make more sense in the code. So the user ID is going to be what we query by. And then our update command is going to be not push, but add to set. And we're going to add to the skill set the skill ID from the payload in the request body. The reason we're using add to set instead of push is that we don't want duplicates. If we define our uh, list of skills to be a set, then every time you add a new skill, it will not duplicate itself if it's already in the set. So that's kind of a handy way to bypass having to validate whether the skill is already in the array versus um, in this case, we're just inserting optimistically and it will handle it by itself. Once that query is done, then we want to redirect the user back to their profile page. So slash users, quest.params.id. I think that's pretty much what we're looking for. Let's uh, actually test this before we get any further. So nothing's broken on our server. And instead of slash skills, let's go to slash users. Fail to look up view index skills. OK, let's try this again. Wait, where is that coming from, that error? Users should render users, not index skills. Oh, I see. I believe that was from before when I accidentally changed that one file. There we go. Let's create a new user. We can do Ellie's user. Um, and we'll go to Ellie's profile. And there is no skills here, so it's undefined. So that is something that we will have to fix. But let's see if the edit works for now. The new link with the add a new skill is there, which is great. But it seems like it's broken. Skill is not defined. OK, I see. What we need to do here is actually import skill. We're going to make queries against it. So hopefully nodemon should restart my server. And there we go. It's working. So we're at the users slash user ID slash skills slash new endpoint. And what I can do is hopefully click on adding the skill mongoose. But then I'm getting an error here. So slash users slash ID slash skills. Interesting. So 
this is actually making a get request. So I think I forgot to put the new user skill. I forgot to put the method equals post. Forgot to put quotes around it. <laughs> very, very particular. Interesting that it doesn't break. It just kind of goes along with it, but ignores it. Um, let's try this again. Restart the server here. So when I go back to users, go to edit, add a new skill, node.js, can't read property length of undefined. So something's up with our skills query. It's not inserting skills properly because the, the loop there is not working where it's looping through all the skills for the user. So let's see about that. The problem is when we do the get to the user ID, um, we're not passing skills down to the show template. And template is trying to render skills, but it's saying that there are no skills. So let's try that. Let's try to fix our bug first before we go about making a query. Let's just do an empty array of skills. And we'll see if it renders. Yep. Cool. So the rest of the logic is probably working. We just need to set up a query now to show the skills for a particular user. Then we can see if it's really working. Lots of bugs in this recording. Apologies. Let's see here, though. So what we can do is find by ID. And then there's a special method called populate. And what populate does is it looks in the references for the document IDs. And it replaces the IDs with the actual documents from the other collections. So when we populate skills, and then since we're using a new query builder syntax, we have to do an exec after that to execute it. We should actually have const skills equals user.skills. But if we don't get any back, we can have an empty array just to kind of prevent more errors from happening. And then we'll pass skills to our template. Let's try this again. Here we go. So you can see the skill that we added before was actually in the database. It just needed the populate in order to render. Let's try this again. Go back to edit for Ellie's profile and then add a new skill. And we'll try Python. And then it takes us back to Ellie's user ID and it shows Python in the list. We can confirm this in the terminal by looking at the logs from Mongoose debugging. So in this case, the latest query, which renders Ellie's profile, it does users find one, and it queries by ID, which is in the route parameter. And then the populate query is right here, skills.find, where the ID is in the list of IDs um, that are in the skills reference uh, list. So Ellie has a list of skills IDs, and then it's returning skills.find, the result of those uh, IDs being queried. And that's essentially how associations work. The rest of it here, we could add additional methods and entire on skills, but we've essentially covered the, the bare minimum and we have a working association. So in summary, the way that associations work in Mongoose, the preferred way probably, is to define a list of references to another schema, in this case the skill schema. By the way, it doesn't have to be a list. You can have a one-to-one -one relationship instead of a one-to-many relationship, which is what this is. You can have a single object to reference a single skill, for example. But that's pretty much it for associations in Mongoose. And um, we'll probably expand on this in a little bit. But hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.